Let's focus on the matter at hand, which is uh, which is Con Air. Yes. One of my favorites. It's on cable. And I, I thought, you know, you could go out and review movies people haven't seen. But I don't know. Why not review a movie everyone has seen 150 times? And huh? that's on 150 times a week. Right. So uh, I gave it to uh, Bill watched it over the weekend as a, a refresher course. And he pulled some of his choice moments from Con Air. In our little basic cable classics review. First, I want to say the movie is about uh, Cameron Poe, I think is... Good name. Passes your action movie name test. Right. That's the name of Nick Cage's. He was framed for a crime he didn't commit. By the way, framed enough. We don't need for a crime he didn't commit. It's like engaged to be married. We understand what framed means. Of course, it was a crime you didn't commit. You can't be framed for a crime you actually carried out. But the point is, is he gets thrown in jail. And we don't have this part on the tape. No, the we, we got to get the judge's verdict. The judge's verdict we have. Let's but, set it up, though. But here's what got him to the courthouse. He went to a bar right. after serving this country in the military. He goes to the bar, the honky-tonk that his wife works at after being away in Iraq or somewhere for four years. He comes back, and he walks in there. He's like, baby, I just want to die in your arms. And then there's the local troublemakers right? and, and the guy's buddies who wear the hats weird. And they're like, hey, soldier boy. And the guy crumples up five bucks and throws it in his face. And I thought, uh, first off, horrible strategy to make fun of Green Berets when you're <laughs> S-faced. But they do that. Then they follow him. He's like, I don't want any trouble. I just want to be with my lady. And they follow him out into but the parking lot. The other lot. question is, why are they so anxious to start up with, with the soldier? Like, hey, you served your country. <laughs> you're a jerk. <laughs> you think you're a killing machine? Well, let's find out in the parking lot, right. son. Yeah, not a great strategy. But they follow him out to the parking lot. Of course, it's driving rain. But there's some sort of smokestack in the background that billows balls of fire in slow motion. I want to know where this bar is. But the point is, is they go out. One guy pulls a knife on him. The other guy it busts a bottle him. on him. The other guy lunges at him with the knife. And then the next thing you know, we're at the courtroom because he defended himself. Let's hear what the judge had to say about it. You weren't prepared for that one, Brian? Right. No. Cameron Poe. The eight-minute ramp up to it didn't, you didn't have leave been ample time. to manslaughter in the first degree. With your military skills, you are a deadly weapon and are not subject to the same laws as other people that are provoked because you can respond... Hold on deadly for a second. <laughs> Hold on. So that's subject. So listen, if, if, three, if three drunken truckers jump you in a parking lot with a knife, you're supposed to just a offer your liver up to them so they can pierce it listen, with a stiletto? You, you're not subject to the same law. Us, as think, other Americans. I kind of think you are if you're in the military. <laughs> Ridiculous. And it's not just laws of this country. Laws of nature, like gravity, <laughs> not subject to it. Ridiculous. All right, all right let's hear the rest of that story. Well, you shall remain incarcerated for a term not less than seven to ten years. Wow. Well, that's it. By the way, talk about horrible representation. You're decorated military veteran. You get jumped in a parking lot by three drunk bikers, and a guy lunges with you at a knife, and you're doing 10 years now. And, and where was the jury on this? Because it, it, should we side with the three drunk guys or the guy who served our country valiantly for <laughs> the last 10 very years? very sympathetic to drunken bikers. So Some now, of these public defenders aren't that good. Now he's in the joint. Now, he goes in the joint, and all he wants to do is see his unborn babies. Baby's unborn at the time. Now, the baby's like eight, seven, eight years old. He's being paroled, and he has to get on the flight. Con Air. Well, you left out one key part. Mm. He didn't want to see the baby in the joint, because mm. he, he didn't want her to see him right. in there with, with those these, guys. With these miscreants. Right. right. And yeah. all he did, it was one of those things where lots, lots, of, nice, lots of nice slow motion shots of him doing chin-ups on that mysterious piece of plumbing that goes through every right. cell so that the actor who'd been working with a personal trainer for the last four months can have a shirt off and do chin-ups. I, I I have not been inside too many prisons. I've been in a few and I've looked up and I never see that piece of pipe that goes through that they can do the chin-ups on. But yeah. he's doing that. Of course, he's befriended the black guy who was Bubba Gump. I Bubba think. Gump. From, yes. From uh, Ving Rhames? No. 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 Michael T. Williams. Ving Rhames is in this one, too, but he's the bad guy. Anyway, they get onto the plane, and they're on with hardened criminals, and the hardened criminals take over the plane. Because they pull pins out of their hands to unleash their handcuffs. That's right. You can get out. You can open any door 
if you use With a, a paper pin. clip. Yeah, yeah. or really? a paper. Yeah. And also, it doesn't hurt at all to put a, a giant safety pin through your hand and then pull it out. <laughs> so they get out totally of their cuffs, they commandeer the plane. Now, one of them is a pilot, and they take over the plane. And what's our next clip, Bill? Do you know? Our next clip is Malkovich saying the title of the movie in one of his lines, which I always think is like, if it's a real action movie, you have to say the title somewhere during the movie. Right. Yeah, it's like the band Big Country. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I have the only gun on board. Welcome to Con Air. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're on the plane. They're flying over the desert. The plan is to hook up with a, some Colombian drug lord who's on the plane, too, and get his henchmen Wait, I have to a get question him in a private though. jet. Yes. Do you think Con Air was the name of the movie? After they saw the cut, and they were like, hey, let's see. Or do, do you think they said, we got to work Con Air into the script? Originally, it was Soul Plane. <laughs> <laughs> All right. W what else? What is our next clip? With oh, it's Cusack. Oh, yeah. Cusack? Cusack. Now, what's he, who's he talking to? Cusack and Nick Cage. I like this one because... It's one of, just one of these classic action movie sequences where you just it just would not happen in any other movie. Cusack and Cage square off. C it, in some, like, abandoned plane hangar. Yeah, and it was a great... They don't it's, know whether they could trust each other It's or not. a great time for uh, Nick Cage fans because his hair is long, but he's simultaneously going bald. <laughs> While the hair is getting physically longer, it's receding in the front. And when you see him now, he's had plugs put in or grafts or whatever. But this is right. There's that point... That happened. He, yeah, uh, Bruce Willis had this happen in his career too. If you watch Hudson Hawk or something, there's that point where they don't admit that they're going bald, right. so they don't do anything about it. And then later on, they've done something about well, here's it. Here's the irony because he's facing off with Cusack, who also went bald and say anything. <laughs> right. And this was the first movie where he broke out the new plugs. So I think this inspired Nick Cage to get the plugs. Probably watching yeah. dailies. Here it is. Sorry, boss, but there's only two men I trust. One of them's me. The other's not you. Yeah. Wait, wait, <laughs> yeah. I'm confused. <laughs> There's too many trusts. One's what? him. The other's not John Cusack. But who is it? I wore out we the pause know. button on the TiVo <laughs> trying to sort through that one. I was pretty Why? high, but I, I had to play it back 28 times to figure out what was going on. I thought he was talking ass about me the first time I saw it. Uh, this one is, in my opinion, one of the five greatest back and forth in any action movie. Uh, Cyrus the Virus, played by John Malkovich, about to blow up. One of his cronies. Oh, I see. Right. Right. Now, wait a minute. What? What? He has a cigarette. Has a cigarette. The guy is covered in gasoline, which is always important. You have sure. to have somebody who's covered in gasoline. And right. he's about to flick the cigarette and blow up this guy. All right. Sorry. Anara. <laughs> That's why I always go with Mr. Virus. I never go with side. I want the Anara, <laughs> Anara jump yeah. Flips. And, you know, let me say something, too. What, in, in all action movies, the flip, the flicking of the cigarette is 100% or 1,000% batting average with blowing up the natural gas or lighting. How many times, really? I've tried to light fireworks off a cigarette a thousand times. It always takes 10 or 15 attempts to do it, right. then it blows up in your hand. But they flip that. As long as you flick it in slow motion, whatever it lands on will go up in flames. If, you ever, if your wife was lying in bed, Covered, covered in water and wet towels, and you flick the cigarette in slow motion at her. Poof, <laughs> she would go up in a ball of flames. Yeah, they never have the movie where the guy flicks the cigarette and everybody waits for it to blow up, and then and nothing happens. No, no, no. Oh, went to, out. What the hell? Has to do it again. Light another <laughs> cigarette. All right. Oh, we got one more. Yeah, one more. This oh. is the emotional part of the movie. Uh, Nick Cage, as you know. Did not want to leave the plane to see his wife and his baby would never seen yet because Bubba Gump had diabetes and needed insulin. Oh, okay. So he's like, well, do I save this guy that I've known for three can't years or do I meet my new kid? can't leave a man behind. You can't. Right. So now he's telling Bubba Gump everything's going to be okay. All I can think about is like, there ain't no God. Like, he don't exist. Hey, where you going? I'm going to show you God does exist. Distracted by the guy playing the flamenco guitar, <laughs> just just on the right side of the screen. But when the '80s rock band came yeah. in and played the guitar, yeah, the, the '80s rock, the high pitch, that was a, that's an action movie staple. <laughs> Let me hear that guitar Wee -wee. one more, one more time. I like it starts with the flamingo and then goes. There ain't no God. Like, he don't exist. Hey, where you going? I'm gonna 
want to show you God does exist. <laughs> Later on in the movie, they have to set the plane down on the Las Vegas Strip because they didn't have enough gas to make it to Las Vegas Airport, which is essentially on the Las Vegas Strip. It, right. It's as if the Las Vegas Strip just turns and takes the shape of an L. Like, he flew over McCarran Airport to land it on the Strip. <laughs> There's two problems. There's that, and also, it's like a Friday night, and there's no traffic at all on the Strip. He's putting it down, yeah. yeah. Puts hey, it down right on the Strip. there are no cars on a Friday night. Yeah, has anyone happens. ever been to the Strip at any point yeah, in time where it hasn't been it's completely a, packed? It, it's, it's more of a daytime crowd over there in Vegas, i found. Hey. Nighttime. It's not a weekend or a nighttime crowd over there. Or maybe there wasn't a big fight in town or something. Anyway, the point is, we make fun of it because we love. Still a classic. Still a classic, and even you know what it has is at, right at the end when he lands the plane, you think, all right, it's and then they have to it's throw over. in the one more absurd sequence where yeah, like a guy bites. in a fire engine and Nick Cage has to jump from his motorcycle to the fire ladder. Let me ask you this: Is anyone in a movie forget about flipping a cigarette butt in slow motion and have 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 whatever they flipped it onto not not burst into flames? Has anyone ever tried to commandeer a motorcycle unsuccessfully in a movie? Because every time it's forearm to delivery guy. Give me that. He hops on the bike. And there's never any struggle. Like, hey, dude, that's my bike. Right. And by the way, bikers are usually badass dudes. You know, guys who ride motorcycles, they're not going to give up the bike without a struggle. They're always hopping on cop bikes, hopping on uh, every bike. Yeah, and then he's on a fire truck. Uh, it just keeps going. Plus, Cusack is like, a, you, you always have the characters who know how to operate the motorcycle. Yeah, you couldn't hop on it. No. You can't even drive a stick. No, I could drive a stick. I'm oh, sorry. I'm and a motorcycle. Making... But Cusack's like a U.S. Marshal. Right. Like, right. it's like, well, well, he's relying on his copious amounts of experience operating <laughs> motorcycles as a U.S. Might. Like, what? Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, Con Air, everybody.